Welcome to the Nebraska Soybean Board Weekly Market Roundup, being brought to you by Nebraska Soybean Farmers and their checkoff. I'm Susan Littlefield on location in Minneapolis, Minnesota. We have been at the U.S. Meat Export Federation Spring Conference, which I have learned so much about where we're sitting export-wise, the good news that's been happening for all of our proteins, uh, beef, lamb, and of course, pork. And we're also going to take a look during this program talking about export-wise, but we're also going to take a look at El Nino. When is it going to happen. There's a lot of folks waiting for those raindrops to definitely start falling down. We'll take a look at what the market's been doing heading into this three-day holiday weekend here on the Rural Radio Network. So stick around. More is coming up. Imagine a future fueled by soy-based possibilities. A future where creativity and productivity live together under one roof. A future that takes you from point A to point B, to point Z, all while ensuring brighter tomorrows for our next generation. A soy-based future? It's already here. And welcome back once again. As you can see, we've got Alan Brugler joining us with Brugler Marketing and Management and Darren Fessler with Lakefront Futures. And and gentlemen, I am out of state. I'm back in, in my home state of Minnesota. So the first thing I asked Alan when he jumped on the screen was, did you guys get any rain this week? Because I was watching that rain cell moved through, hoping that you guys got some rain. Alan, you said you just got a trace, enough to make the sidewalk wet? Yeah, just enough to get the sidewalk wet in Omaha. Now, they did get a pretty good rain out central Nebraska, out towards McCook and uh, between McCook and Kearney, uh, you know, a little wetter out there. But uh, here in uh, Omaha and south of here, southeast Nebraska is still pretty dry. We're Darren, down we- about three and a half inches on the year. Oh, wow. Darren, what about you? Did you get any rain in this last cell that moved through? None. A few, a couple drops. I could probably count them on one hand, though. Yeah, it would nothing. Bone okay. dry. Well, that's kind of where we're going to kick off and, and start talking about is this weather. And Alan, I was talking a little bit about El Nino before we started this program and wondering, when is it going to start? There's some, you know, I know there's a window, but many ho- fo- folks hoping that it's going to be June, not August. Yeah, the, the way the Weather Service tracks El Nino is, is it's overlapping three-month windows. So they, they kind of average the data. You know, the daily data is very noisy. And it's pretty clear the, the sea surface temperatures have warmed up. You've got that, that differential to qualify for an El Nino. You've got uh, the Tahiti uh, air, air pressure has also shifted. Uh, they're, they're still thinking that June, July, August uh, – uh, quarter, if you will, is is the most likely time in July, August, September, secondary. The uh, the biggest problem is trying to predict what the impact is on on U.S. weather. There's the only really strong correlations with El Nino or for the s- southern U.S. over the winter. Uh, you, you get. Uh, I I did notice though that we've got a high tendency in transition years from La Nina to El Nino pattern for it to be warm and dry in late May and June uh, in the, the Western Corn Belt. In other words, uh, the Illinois, Iowa, Missouri, Eastern Nebraska area is a target in, under that set of uh, criteria. And that's certainly what we're looking at as we go into Memorial Day weekend. Darren, you shared a, a graphic or a, a picture, I should say, um, earlier on Twitter on, on a Friday that talked about precipitation, precipitation that is from April 1st to May 26th. And there is still a lot of orange and even red on that screen. Yeah. I, you look at the Western Corn Belt as a whole. I mean, it, just take Nebraska as a whole. It, it's like two extremes. The East really dry. The West, boy, it's like Noah's Ark wet. Uh, you know, it, it's, and so, yeah, there's a lot of issues that I, I even showed some photos of our own family's farm where if you don't have water, there's a lot of dry land corners that are the seeds are sitting there. There's there's not enough moisture even to get it out of the ground. Um, that's a huge, huge concern. We are way, way too early to be pumping this type of water right now. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's early. It's May. That's good. Uh, I'd rather have the drought or the dryness now than six weeks from now. Um, that that's huge. I mean, the models can shift daily every six to 12 hours. So I've always gone with the thumb is every, you know, seven to 10 days, much past that. I don't put a whole lot of confidence in it, uh, especially the GFS, which is extreme, but 
they've been very consistent so far over the next seven to 10 days where Iowa, Illinois dry. Uh, a lot of Illinois clients sent me some images. It's, it's getting dry. It looks good, but it is definitely getting dry over there. But is it too early to be talking about abandoning anchors? Because man, I have heard some producers in Nebraska, Kansas, that are looking at these crops, especially dry land and saying, I'm done. <sighs> You kind of ask, you know, it, how long can some of this seed just sit in the ground? Yeah, mm -hmm. I, if you give it another two weeks, we, we got a real big problem on our hands. Um, so we, we are in desperate and dire need of rain in some of these dry land fields, for sure. Well, Alan, but what about from a wheat perspective? Some areas of Kansas did get some decent rains in the last week and a half or so, but is it going to be a make or break for this winter wheat crop? Well, I think the winter wheat crop, the, the hard red winter wheat crop is already broken. Uh, there is a, about 25 to 30 percent of the crop had not headed yet as of uh, a week ago. So it's potentially still can benefit a little bit in terms of uh, head development and kernel development. You're not going to get new tillers that amount to anything at this point. But uh, yeah, it's helpful, but it's probably that rains more helpful probably for putting in uh, sorghum after the wheat or uh, maybe in some areas, even trying a little bit of corn. The HRW crop is still probably going to be the smallest since 1957, even if we do get a little bit of a bump here out of this uh, late rainfall. Any excitement for the soybeans in this week, or did they just kind of go along for the ride in the grain trade? Soybeans uh, were under pressure primarily because of soybean meal. Soybean meal's got a head and shoulders top. Uh, you're starting to see more supply out of South America now that their harvest is wrapping up. Uh, so meal dropped down to 400 bucks. That put a lot of pressure on crush margins. Soy oil was kind of all over the place. The, uh, uh, the bean story is pretty clear. Uh, we're not going to get many exports here between now and, and uh, September or maybe even October. The uh, over 80% of the shipments for the year have already happened, very likely. The uh, Brazilians were estimating yesterday that uh, their shipping for uh, May would be 15.7 million tons. The U.S. has never done a 15.7 million ton export month in beans. Well, speaking of exports, Darren, maybe we should flip it and call it imports. Uh, the fact that we've got some wheat coming into the United States. Yeah, I, I, it, it's a little bit surprising to see, but, you know, given the HR conditions right now, I mean, there's a lot of guys when, when we speak about how bad Kansas is right now, I don't think really outside of that area, they hear about it. They read the headlines. I mean, we're talking APH type stuff that, you know, are the appraised, I should say, down to a half a bushel, down to two bushel. I mean, this is, Alan's right, this, this crop is a disaster. And, you know, only range at this point is going to benefit it. Some of these wheat imports it doesn't surprise me one bit. I mean, but as far as our, our wheat market as a whole, though, I mean, we still got to be more competitive with France. We still, I mean, with the whole Black Sea Grain Corridor getting extended again, we're still be, being competed, competing against the, the cheaper, you know, Ukrainian, cheaper Russian type wheat. So, I mean, it, it's the same thing in the bean side of things. We got to be more competitive to really get that more of that business driving to the U.S. market. You know, it's not very often we talk politics per se in, in these market trades, but we got to talk Prop 12 a little bit, Alan, because, I mean, it made a lot of water cooler hallway talk here at USMEF. And we know that, that folks are looking at this and looking at the market potential and what it could mean for, for our U.S. pork producers. Well, you know, you're taking a fairly large market and making it very hard to sell pork into that market. Uh, you know, you, you had some producers that have converted over their operations to to uh, meet the California criteria, but most of them haven't. So uh, you're assuming that you're, you're going to sell a lot less pork into that market and it's got to go somewhere else. And what we're seeing is pretty good pressure on loins and bellies. Uh, belly stocks are over 81 million pounds at the end of the, la the, the last month for the cold storage report. Uh, that's that's not a record amount of belly stocks in inventory, but it's a high number. It's the largest since 2014. So uh, whether that's Prop 12 or just uh, consumer demand issues is the, it's something to look at further. But uh, yeah, the, you're not going to see a lot of producers just uh, ripping up their facilities to to suddenly meet that California market. Uh, now, 
if if the, the you get a huge price premium in California uh, for meeting the Prop 12 requirements, then you might see some incentivizing to to uh, try and change operations and, and meet that. But otherwise, you're trying to force that that product that normally would go to California into other markets. And uh, the the positive is the, the uh, lean hog index has actually been going up the last couple of weeks. The board has gotten carried away with this as several dollars below the index. Index normally goes up this time of year. So either the board's uh, anticipating what cash is going to do or the board's kind of carried this a little too far. So some positive smiles, uh, Darren, the fact that we saw four and five dollar higher cash cattle in the north this week. Same same theme as we've been talking, Susan, for the last <laughs> a year know, and a half. I mean, it, it's a it's a bullish story on cattle. I mean it, um, and I I promote it a lot. Eat eat your beef; it's good for you, and it continues to go higher. Uh, I mean, it, you look at all of these months, higher highs, higher lows, structurally bullish. And the the thing is, when you start looking out here, it's the same thing. I'm trying to warn the guys with a have a lot of cattle. The same thing's going to happen to you guys as happened to grains. Just, just keep the emotions in check. Everything's bullish. The cash side of things, so it's just really the big driver here. Um, we're already starting to take a look at some proactive measures out to the April fats of 24, even though they, I mean, that's higher highs, higher lows. It's just really bullish here. So we like everything we're seeing right now in cattle. So we we'll just, I just keep emotions in check and make some proactive measures here. Uh, you know, if we keep trending higher. All right. Lots of great things. Hopefully you guys have a nice weekend, do some extra grilling to, to promote the movement of that protein across the grills. And we'll look forward to having you on the show again with us soon. Thanks so much. Thanks a lot. And of course, we want to remind folks that commodity futures and options do involve a substantial risk of loss, not suitable to all investors. On a side note, this Memorial Day holiday weekend, thank you to all the families who've made that ultimate sacrifice. That's been the Nebraska Soybean Board Weekly Market Roundup.